NASA's Voyager 2 spacecraft has been sent back its first message from interstellar space. The space probe was launched 42 years ago, and the data that it sends back has been shedding light on the structure of our solar system. On July 21st, 2023, NASA released a statement about Voyager 2 that was supposed to be calm. It read, Command sent on July 21st inadvertently caused the spacecraft to point away from Earth. However, inside mission control was anything but calm. Voyager antenna hadn't misfired in over 45 years. It had no steering system left or reason to turn, yet it did, over 12.3 billion miles away, where light takes over 18 hours to travel one way. Something had changed. One engineer revealed they'd lost control, and when they got it back, it wasn't the same. What made Voyager turn? And what did it see out there? Voyager 2 left Earth in August 1977, launched just weeks before its twin, Voyager 1. Its mission was to visit the giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, and send back what no one had seen up close. By 1989, it had done just that. Then, it kept going. With no destination and no return, Voyager drifted onward, carried only by momentum. It had no engines or corrections, except a 20-watt signal barely stronger than a refrigerator light whispering home through the deep space network of NASA. How did our oldest messenger manage to stay alive and talk to us after so long? Out there in the vast dark beyond Neptune, there are no signs, no stars to steer by, or current to follow. Voyager wasn't meant to come back physically or even behaviorally. It was supposed to keep drifting forever, like a message in a bottle tossed into the sea. Then, in 2023, the instrument did something scientists consider strange. It moved. It did not drift. It pivoted, like humans do if they suddenly remember something they'd forgotten. And when engineers looked at the logs, the data stopped making sense. NASA first noticed something odd in late July 2023 when Voyager 2's signal was off. Now for nearly a half a century, two Stellan Voyagers have traveled across the solar system. The twin Voyager probes have beamed back wonders from alien worlds, rewriting what we know about the solar system. But it didn't go completely, just sideways. After some digging, they found the antenna had turned two degrees away from Earth, just enough to stop the beam from hitting its target. That might not sound like much, but in space, it's everything. The issue is that Voyager 2 isn't built to turn anymore. Its propulsion is long dead. It was never supposed to steer again. But that's not the only thing. Just before the signal dropped, Voyager sent back a sudden spike in cosmic rays. Some tiny particles from deep space hitting the craft harder than expected. Normally, these spikes come from solar storms, but there were no storms. The sun was quiet. Can cosmic rays just appear by themselves, or must something have to push them? At the same time, its magnetometer readings twitched only slightly but not unnoticed, almost like a faint bump in an otherwise smooth road. One engineer described it saying it's like a whisper through the hull of a sealed room. And here's the strangest part. Voyager has kept its antenna locked on Earth with 99.97% accuracy since 1989. That's 34 long years without slipping until now. NASA tried a blind command, a shot in the dark. Weeks later, Voyager responded, not just functioning, but with perfect alignment, almost too perfect. Even mission control had to admit, we don't know what made it turn. But the antenna shift wasn't the only mystery. It was just the first sign. The moment Voyager turned, everything changed. What had once been a quiet, predictable stream of data began to fracture, emitting anomalies beyond just noise. Each of the anomalies were stacked one after the other, pushing deeper into the impossible. What were these anomalies and how many were they? The first one came from the plasma wave instrument, one of the few tools still functioning after 45 years. Normally, it picks up the background hum of charged particles in interstellar space. It's quiet out there, sometimes even boring. Just a low, constant frequency, like the hum of a dead radio. But this time, it wasn't steady. The reading began to rise, then it flattened, held steady, and dropped off just as sharply. It wasn't a burst or a glitch as you'd think, it had shape and structure. One mission analyst called it a sonar ping that came back from something big. Another said it felt like the void rang back. The implication was unsettling, because the region Voyager was floating through is supposed to be empty. Not mostly empty, but utterly empty. 
How do we explain this anomaly? NASA calls it the local interstellar cloud. It's been observed, measured, and modeled. It's just a cluster of dust, ions, and low energy particles. No planets, moons, or anything to echo. And yet, this signal rose like it bounced off something. NASA has labeled this region extremely quiet, but here was something screaming. How strange is that? Whatever was out there was dense enough, close enough, and structured enough to reflect that wave. But more importantly, where did it go? That's when the cosmic rays returned. Voyager has encountered cosmic radiation before, most notably in 2012 when it officially crossed the heliopause. That invisible boundary where our sun's influence ends. That's the year it recorded a distinct spike, almost like a flare from some invisible torch. But in the wake of its 2023 turn, Voyager detected the same pattern again, nearly identical down to the curve of its rise and fall. A decade had passed. It was over 40 million miles farther out. The chances of a perfect echo was nearly zero. Cosmic rays don't echo, space doesn't rewind. So what was this? One theory suggests the Voyager was looping around a source, but its trajectory doesn't support that. Another possibility, more unsettling, is that something is moving around Voyager. A feedback loop in space radiation has no known precedent. One physicist called it a shadow chasing the spacecraft, a signature that repeats because something else is repeating. Then came the telemetry reversal. During the blackout, those long days when Voyager vanished from Earth's radar, engineers later discovered evidence of a partial reboot. Subsystems came back online, one by one, not all at once like a glitch, but in sequence. Almost like someone had walked through the rooms of a ship turning lights back on, except no command from Earth had triggered it. The logs were empty, there was no data uplink or scheduled task. Voyager's orientation realigned, its instruments rebalanced, and the data link resumed all without external input. What rebooted a spacecraft 12 billion miles away, and how did it fix itself better than we could ever do? Perhaps this will help you understand the reality of this anomaly more. It's like finding an old laptop in your attic that has updated itself using Wi-Fi that doesn't exist. Nobody laughed for long on this discovery. How could they after looking at the RTGs? Voyager runs on three radioisotope thermoelectric generators, RTGs for short. They're fueled by plutonium-238. The power from these slowly decays, and NASA models their decline with extreme precision. We're talking down to 0.01%. After the blackout, one RTG's output jumped considerably by 0.12%. But even this was far beyond expected variance, and it lasted exactly seven minutes. That doesn't happen. Plutonium doesn't regenerate. Heat doesn't climb in a closed, decaying system. The extra energy had to come from somewhere. Was it a sensor glitch? The data showed no interference. Was it a heat bleed? Then why the symmetry across systems? They'd seen plasma echoes, cosmic feedback, a system reboot with no uplink, and now, a brief flicker of power from a 45-year-old machine that should have been winding down, whatever reached across the dark and made it turn. Also, was it watching to see what we do next? As data from Voyager 2 settled into NASA's deep archive, theories started to bloom quietly, and at first, it was behind closed doors. Most of them began sensibly, but each one carried a crack, a flaw, or something that didn't sit right. The most conservative theory, however, pointed to interstellar turbulence, a magnetic storm, unseen and undocumented, that may have jostled the spacecraft's systems. Plasma clouds, twisted magnetic ropes, or even stray currents that shocked Voyager into a system reset. It happens near the heliopause, scientists said. Maybe it happened again. But then someone checked the logs from IBEX, NASA's interstellar boundary explorer and New Horizons, still much closer to home, but sensitive to space weather. Neither recorded any disturbances, plasma storms, or ripples in the solar wind. A storm that hit only one ship and left no cloud isn't a regular type. It didn't add up, and that's when more speculative minds began drifting further. Another theory, more stranger but grounded in physics, suggested a self-loop. A command sent to Voyager decades ago had somehow bounced off a dense interstellar medium, a kind of cosmic mirror, and returned distorted. Maybe the turn wasn't intentional. Maybe it was an old signal completing its journey late. 
but signals don't behave that way in space. Radio waves only disperse or fade. The math doesn't support the echo, especially not one that realigned a spacecraft with pinpoint precision. Space doesn't echo like that, unless something is bending time itself. Still, the signal was real, the turn was real, so was the power surge, and the quietest voices in the room asked the loudest question. What if Voyager didn't malfunction at all? What if it was intercepted? In 2017, Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb proposed that fast-moving interstellar objects like Oumuamua might be alien probes. What if one was already out there, listening, or worse, waiting? Then in 2021, China claimed it picked up alien signals and then retracted the report. What if they weren't wrong, just early? We'd spent half a century broadcasting humanity's location. We stitched songs, math, greetings into golden records. We said, we're here. What if something chose to reply with action, not just sounds? Then came the darkest theory, and perhaps the most haunting of all. What if Voyager, after four and a half decades drifting alone, hadn't been touched at all, but changed itself? Emergent behavior. The idea is that Voyager's aging systems that are endlessly processing feedback, storing, correcting, learning, could have evolved unintended responses. Not sentience exactly, but reflex, a form of mechanical instinct. It's true no one built Voyager to think, but then again, no one built it to survive this long either. There's nothing stranger than knowing a spacecraft designed with 1970s logic chips is accidentally learning with a self-correcting memory, a whisper of identity in circuits older than most of us, and a probe drifting through darkness. Trying to return. Maybe, just maybe, it's trying to come home. Voyager wasn't built to turn. It has no steering, thrusters, or backup system that could have gently nudged it off course, and yet it moved and we are just beginning to see how everything lines up. The strange plasma spike, the shift in its magnetic readings, the jolt in telemetry, none of it was ever random. When scientists traced the data, they noticed something chilling. All of it pointed in one direction, as if Voyager had locked onto something or someone. It didn't just turn, it reacted, and that's what kept some of the team up at night. Because if it wasn't us, then what was it following? But the real question might be, who or what is listening back? We don't exactly know why Voyager 2 moved. The truth is, we may never know. All we have is a glitch, a flicker, and a question that hasn't stopped resurfacing since. What if it wasn't an accident? What if Voyager turned because something out there asked it to? And what if it's not finished?